Hello everyone. So you saw me, we went, uh, just made the broadcast live on YouTube. Start in one minute. Andrew, Bilal, are both of you ready? Did we start? Hello, Dr. Omid. Yeah, I think we, can, we could start. It's now 7.05. So uh, just at the beginning, uh, anyone has questions about what we have been uh, doing last time or uh, want to repeat something? Because I, for the physics, creation of a physics phantom, I actually had to do it several times just to make sure that I'm, I'm doing something correct. And I started to understand a little bit uh, how things are done in MMCTP. So let's run the application. So I'm running the code uh, uh, from the source, compiling it and running it. But I have it actually built uh, already. Uh, there were a few things specific to Mac uh, 10.15. I, I showed Andrew these things. Uh, but I see that he has actually uh, released a newer version, has these small comments about the Slurm. So Slurm works now. I don't need to actually modify anything in the code. It's fine.
Okay. So this is a physics phantom that I've generated. Z, Z, Z. Well, I can go through it again. I'll just to generate a new one. So uh, basically, we want the physics phantom to do some uh, calculations. You know, typical calculations would be PDDs, uh, uh, output. Uh, and I think this is available in many commercial uh, planning systems. We have this definitely in Eclipse where we can create uh, uh, cubical phantoms uh, to do whatever we want to, to uh, just calculate the PDDs or to do actually uh, uh, what we call QA for the treatment planning system and so on. So uh, with MMCTP, this is uh, in the file menu. I'm using the Mac version, but in the Windows probably you have the same thing. And there you will go like RT patient, import an RT patient. And uh, typically this is, uh, this is what you would do if you want to import uh, DICOM files. But in our case, uh, I don't have any DICOM files there in that folder. Uh, so uh, we can click on physics, and this is how to generate this physics phantom. So I will give it a name. So we call this, uh, what should we call it? We call it uh, ZZZ of A2, since I have ZZZ1. Uh, we we'll also give it Z2. The image size. This gave me a bit of uh, trouble just to understand how, uh, because the problem is with those X, Y, Z, the convention is a bit different. Uh, the Y actually represents the number of sli uh, uh, slides, uh, slices, and uh, uh, the X and Z represent the pixels, you can think of it in the phantom. But uh, uh, Andrew has taken care of this so that everything in MMCT in MMCT is consistent. Uh, so N would be actually the number of boxes. So this represents the number of, of uh, slices. Here it's 40 uh, uh, and uh, voxel size is one. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna put it as 80. So I want 80. Uh, and by the way, the more you use, <coughs> the more uh, memory will be required. So, you know, be careful about this. So 80 and uh, the voxel size, this will be 0.5. So in the Z direction, basically, I want an image every five millimeter. And in the axial cuts, that's the X and, and Y. Uh, this is, by the way, this is not like how our eclipse in the clinic is configured. The Z is, uh, actually, no, this is, uh, well, no, the Y is actually the, the soup inf direction. So that would, would, would follow the, uh, number of uh, slices uh, and the X and Z that's in, you know, they, they control the pixels in the uh, in an axial cut. So here I'm going to put 400 and I want this to be one millimeter. Okay, so I'm trying basically what I'm trying to do is to generate a physics phantom where uh, an image, you know, of a physics phantom where I have 40 voxels. Uh, so think of, uh, let's talk about the axial cut. I have 40 voxels in the left, right direction. And each voxel has a dimension of one millimeter. So the total length uh, uh, or the width in this case uh, of the phantom is going to be uh, 40 centimeters. Again, from top to bottom, I want also 40 voxels, one millimeter. Uh, so it gives me a dimension of 40. And then in the, uh, uh, in the number of slices, this is 80. And we have uh, five millimeters, uh, the size of each voxel. So that will give me, uh, again, a 40 centimeter uh, phantom in, in, in that direction. But the voxel size, uh, you know, or the number of slices is going to be different. Hansfeld unit values, I want it to be uniform, zero, or voxels. So we're going to create uh, the patient. Okay. 
Okay, so when I close this and we go to open, then I see the patient created again. So now we're going to open this patient. So basically we have created an image of, of uh, you know, our phantom. Now the next step is we need to assign calculation voxels uh, for, for this uh, image. So we can, for example, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, the dimensions of the calculation boxes does not necessarily need to be the same as the dimensions of the uh, image boxes. Uh, so for example, we can make, uh, you know, the boxes every five millimeters. Uh, and that probably means that, uh, so in the end, uh, in the axle cut, imagine we have five millimeter boxes so I probably need eight regions, uh, 80, uh, 80 uh, calculation boxes to, to do a calculation for the full pattern. But then the resolution you know, is not as good. Uh, so that's it. This is the phantom. The next step, I'm going to calculate a plan. So even if you don't have a CT of a, of a patient, you can just create a plan. And uh, I'm going to rename the plan. I'm going to call it, uh, for example, Jones. And in that plan, I'm going to add then a beam. So uh, now, uh, once I've added the beam, we double click and we select the beam we want to use. So now I have six MB. And I can go and select the geometry. Uh, this is where the eye center is. The eye center, uh, like Andrew showed us this trick, and probably we'll, we'll maybe let me repeat it again. So uh, if I go to the view section, this was one of the problems I faced. I can adjust this window level, and now we should start to see the factor or the image of the plant. Okay, and we're going to scale this to 60. So uh, this unfortunately only scales the, the upper, the top uh, image. I would hey, let me, yes. let me tell you how to do the other ones. Right okay. click but, on the scale. Right click where? On the scale, the word scale. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right click on the slider bar. Okay, there it is. So now I can go to the left and change this to eight. Okay. 60. Okay. There it works. So we'll reduce this a little bit. Okay. And uh, so on the bar. There it is. I see something 3D, but I don't see 3D image. Yeah, the but, 3D uh, viewer has been discontinued. Okay. okay. So probably you need to fix this to remove it actually from the list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we have the phantom. And then if I click on ISO Center, we should now see a right dot. So I just have to select the beam, uh, a red dot where the ISO Center is. Since I want to calculate a PDD, I want uh, uh, the eye center uh, or an SSD of 100, then I need to move this eye center somewhere here. And that is simple. I'll just put the Y, V minus 20. So now the eye center is on the top here. And uh, like Andrew said, if I want to do outputs, then the MUs, I need to put here MUs uh, equal to one. Uh, the next step is, uh, we want to generate a phantom, this phantom. So I click on that. This is the calculation uh, voxels. That's, you know, we have an image voxels and then calculation voxels. And uh, since we don't have contours, I think this, is, this probably caused the bug. Uh, I had some issues when I created it. Everything is actually uh, uh, being replaced to, with air. 
And I think because there are no contours in the physics factor, that might actually tell us this. So we're going to see now. So I'm going to not, I'm going to unclick this, click uh, created contour. Uh, CT settings, I only have uh, this default, uh, uh, but since I want a homogeneous phantom, it doesn't matter. And uh, we'll go to the X phantom. So here, minus 20. And I want to actually have the same, uh, uh, let's say, uh, my calculation boxes to match the, the imaging boxes. Uh, so I'm going to put here 400. Uh, sorry, this is uh, point 0.1. And for the Y, it's the same thing, 20, 20, and then 0.1. And then from minus 20 up to 20, and then uh, five. And uh, I'm gonna call this one. Okay, I'm going to start by default. So when I hit generate, it's now going to uh, generate the, the calculation boxes. So we have 400 times 400 times 80. And the, and the, uh, the file, the CT phantom, this is going to be around 600 mids. So uh, it, it's a big phantom. Because transferring the phantom to the cluster takes time. This is gonna take some time. So any comments, Andrew, do you want to add something? No, I, I think you're correct though by deselecting the contour option. That's a it's a smart move. Yeah. We're gonna check now because I think that was causing the problem. Everything uh, once I generate the phantom, uh, uh, although I want everything to be uh, water, but uh, it defaults it back to to uh, uh, air. That's the problem I was facing. We're gonna see how it looks now. Okay. Bilal Hassan is not here today. Uh, usually he's, uh, he's present. Anyone had, had success with doing this or uh, no one has attempted it? I was just talking to Andrew uh, about something special. Okay, so Andrew probably uh, this would illustrate the thing. So if you use the hash if target window. Then, when you build the application, it will not. It will only build uh, uh, build the section relevant to that uh, uh, OS. So then you get a a, a, a small a bit of a smaller uh, uh, executable file. I was never aware of that. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and this is the problem. This the problem with is with Catalina. It has the code works perfectly with with the previous versions. But with Catalina, when you use the special folder applications, uh, it, it does not put an applications folder. And uh, I had problems uh, uh, running the execute. I mean, so I had to comment it out and and fix that you know manually while you know applications. Okay. 
still going. And for the physics uh, section, uh, this is what I've done just to show you. Uh, I think here is the McGill right RT. Uh, it's uh, right McGill. Yes. <clears throat> so this is what I've added. The problem was with the, when you do the physics, this class is not yet in it, it's not initialized. And the system, although it will create the phantom because this comes later, but uh, then you will get an error that, uh, to progress, to modify this uh, progress, maximum progress. Uh, that's, that, that uh, actually, this should be plus one actually. Okay, and uh, uh, so to avoid that problem is, that's why the count, Yeah, so to avoid, you know, trying to think of this thing, is it plus one or, or no, I think it's the count. Uh, because you 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 do the, the, I think this one first, you have a progress bar, and then you want to, then when you do the structures, you want to, uh, you know, to reset the progress bar and then initiate it again. So basically I check if, if it's nil, if it's not nil, then do this. If it's nil, then just skip that. And that's why I don't get, uh, I don't get the, the this bug again. That's an easy one to fix for me, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to look at these bugs just so that uh, uh, it irritates the user, that's a problem. Another option is when you create the physics phantom, you probably need to initialize the, this thing, this class, and then you will not have the, the problem because uh, the count is zero then, but it's up here. Okay, let's see now. I did not realize it's this big. Uh, it takes a long time to. Okay. And the reason why I was looking for one millimeter, <clears throat> I I showed you last time. I had a problem with the MLCs for the. Open did the calculation with the jaws 10 by 10 centimeter. And then I repeated the same calculation, but I opened the jaws to 15 by 15 and collimated down the MLCs to give a 10 by 10 uh, centimeter field. So we should, when we look at the profile, let's say at Dmax uh, or at isocenter, and then the profile for the jaws and the MLCs should match, should be, you know, within agreement. But I was seeing something different. My M the profile with MLCs were about six millimeters uh, larger than those for the jaws. And this is due to one of two things. Either uh, where I have placed my MLCs with respect to the source is wrong, or the other uh, problem is uh, the MLC dimensions, the width of the MLCs are wrong. By the way, I'm not talking about uh, across, uh, uh, like in one dimension, everything was perfect because uh, MMCTP and, and, and EGS, they do calculate the openings of the MLCs to give a field size at, at uh, 100. That's not the problem. But the problem is in the other direction. In the other direction, the field sizes will be defined basically by the width of the MLCs as well as uh, where these MLCs are located. So with the manufacturer data, the physical widths of the MLCs are given. And uh, their location within uh, where they are in the beam geometry are also given. When we do the calculation, you find you have, you will find a six millimeter, uh, it's a big problem. So what I've done, 
instead of, of modifying, well, I could do one of two things, adjust the thicknesses of the MLCs, not the thickness, the width of the MLCs, I could adjust that, or I could play, uh, move the MLCs, uh, uh, you know, bring it closer, for example, to, to the application. The manufacturing states that the MLCs are at, I think, 51 centimeters from the source. And that was giving this error, six millimeter error. I found that if I put the middle of the MLCs at 54 point something, then I get a better agreement. So the MLCs are now closer actually to, to uh, uh, the patient or further away from the source. This is why sometimes manufacturer data, you have to be careful. You have to test it and see if it gives you something uh, that, you know, makes sense or not. We're almost there. Uh, Dr. Ramid, why the calculation is taking so long? Um, uh, this is a big phantom, okay? <laughs> it's huge. It's four, 400. What is happening? I've defined a phantom 400 voxels by 400 by 80. Okay. And now what it's doing now, it's actually assigning to each of these voxels the medium. And writing it because it has to create that. It's a file. So the file size is roughly around 600 megs. Even if you have like a cluster, it, it doesn't uh, split the job, so it has to do it like in no, one no, place. This is creation of the phantom. It's not yeah. the calculation. It's not the Monte Carlo simulation. Okay. Right. So let me chime in, Wamid. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Because Wamid is using a CT to density conversion, that means every single one of those voxels has to go through a a conversion. So it's very slow. So the higher the number of voxels the more um, processes that take place to determine what the Hansfield unit is for that voxel and then to apply that Hansfield unit through a mathematical conversion to a material and density. That's why it was taken so, so long. It, yeah, so it depends. By the way, this phantom you created once, okay? So if you want to go with, with this high, you know, resolution phantom, it's still not a problem. Okay, because you create it once only. Uh, so let's look at the results. So now we, we can, uh, uh, okay, I'm waiting. For, so now you see it's writing now the phantom. The first step was to <laughs> assign the uh, materials and now it's writing this phantom. Also, this is going to take a bit of time. So what if we have, let's say, in homogeneous, in homogeneous phantom, like, let's say three layers of different materials water and the air, let's say, bone structure. And I, I need to do the calculation on uh, inhomogeneous medium. So I, I should do the same thing? Yeah, and but, assign but you each, see, um, each uh, but, but, slit. Uh, but, but uh, yeah. My resolution is very high, OK? Usually, when you do this for the CT, it's, it does not take as much uh, uh, you know, uh, time as, as this. I will show you, I will bring another, so we have a CT. I will show you the conversion. It is, uh, you know, relatively fast. Okay. So now that it's done and uh, let's try to view it. Okay. And you see this, this is now it, it's okay. Uh, if you look at the, because I check at the density. So the phantom density is one and the material is water. Uh, although it's uh, 700, but it's not a big deal. Okay, uh, this is, if I'm looking at material, water material is blue, so that uh, everything is blue. So I'm happy with, with uh, the, the conversion. So probably when you do the physics uh, phantom, and you generate, uh, you know, uh, probably just take out the contours. Uh, we can uh, generate another one. So let me show you again. So let's do this and X phantom. <coughs> So now instead of one millimeter, I'm gonna do five. Okay, and we'll do five millimeters. Okay, and uh, let's generate. Let's change this material. Okay. 
it, you see it's 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 much faster because the number of voxels is uh, uh, is less. Andrew, I have a question. Now my voxel size is actually larger than uh, you know the pixel. So a voxel has you know uh, multi pixels there. In a patient, how do you calculate an average CT uh, for that box? Well, not it's not looking at an average. It's looking at what the voxel is at the center of that pixel. So if that area has a big gradient, um, it may not accurately portray it because it's just looking at the Hounsfield unit at the center of that large voxel. But that Hansfeld unit that it pulls is an average of its neighbors. Okay, again, for the other phantom, it's uh, calculated faster, uh, but, uh, and everything is water there. So, uh, so the phantom was created without any problems. Then uh, I will show you just the calculations. So let's do this one. Uh, so I'm using the five millimeters, 2000, and we're gonna run it. And uh, let me show you something actually interesting. Shall, shall run. So the first step, it's going to actually, we missed it, but it's probably here. Yes. So the first step, when it does this calculation, the phantom is created for the first time, it's going to transfer this CT phantom, this X to the cluster and uh, the size of this this is about three get three megs the size of of the, the you know for, for uh, the phantom the other one the one with the one millimeter resolution that is about uh, 600 megs and it takes a longer time uh, so what happened is it first it, it, it transferred the phantom it transferred the input file for the beam uh, because I'm doing a dose calculation with a library. So that's why it needs, actually this is the, the, the dose uh, input file. And uh, probably it needs to transfer somewhere the, the, the input file for the, uh, the beam calculation. And uh, yes, there are no MLCs because MLC is uh, static. I don't think there is an MLC file. And the calculation is done. And there it is. So then we can, I can distribute this to 68, my 68 uh, nodes. And that is about five times. We are going to let it run. Click on the button. <coughs> So it created again, and then put file and it uploaded it. And now it's going to submit it to uh, the CERN cluster. Let's check. So there is the queue getting populated with the jobs. So once it's done, I'm going to transfer the other phantom and show you. Uh, uh, this is, uh, it's fine if you're doing this but uh, one time for something very important like a physics phantom, but don't let this be a habit for every calculation you need to, uh, to overdo this. And uh, I do have a slow, con well, relatively slow connection between my laptop and the cluster. Within the cluster, I have a one gig uh, connectivity, but from the laptop to the cluster, I'm using Wi-Fi. 
and uh, not the five gig. So it takes time. But probably if, if I, I connected my laptop to the cluster, probably the transfer is going to be faster. Okay, so now things are running fine and we're seeing a progress here, 12%. Let's look at the other one. So let's do the calculation, 2000, and let's run it. And let's, okay. So let's look at the uh, run one. You see the transfer? It's transferring. The first thing is transferring this X phantom, and uh, uh, it's large. Actually, this one is not bad. I did one that is really large. And uh, this one, the size is 74 megs. The other one I've done was uh, 600 megs. So it took time, but again, this is done once. And here you can see the number of, of calculation boxes. 400 by 80 by 400. And the dimensions of the phantom. Uh, and if we go to the previous one, we should find, I think, 80, 80, 80. That is. There it is. So this is the, the 0.5 milli, uh, centimeter all over. Uh, so we have much this number of calculation boxes. Probably, uh, probably <coughs> you, you will need to probably, uh, when you use higher or uh, finer, smaller, let's say boxes, you will probably need to run more histories to achieve, uh, you know, similar uncertainties. Uh, like, like in this case, if I want to achieve the same uncertainty as my, my other phantom, probably uh, the number of histories will be uh, a bit more uh, than the other one. So let me sh show you the problem. Okay, uh, Shell, still running. I have to close this shell. And let's close this patient and okay, save. And I'll open another one. Another. So this is uh, a patient I was using to actually fix or to determine this, this the problem with the MLCs. So I looked at the, the field. Uh, okay. So with the jaws, if I go to the uh, field parameter, the geometry, this is 10 by 10, and the MLCs are retracted all the way. One thing I've done is I've plotted the collimator 90, and that will be clear uh, what I you know, explain what I want to do. Uh, did the calculation, and I got uh, the dose, which is blue, color wash. That is the distribution. Just a regular TV. And um, let's use Android to go there. Thank you. Okay. 
One problem I still have, Andrew, is I cannot actually move a uh, slide to the Mac. I know you can do it with the Windows, but not with the Mac. Version. So I'm going to look into that. And uh, this, okay, it's not good. So, I mean, if you may not be able to move it with your arrow keys left and right, but you should be able to move it with the crosshairs. If you turn the, okay. yeah, if you turn the crosshairs on. Okay. Now okay. you drag those around. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, there is something that doesn't make sense to me. No, it makes sense. Okay, now I see the DMAX. Yes, this is now. Okay. It's good to know. Okay, fine. This is why we need you to show us all these tricks. <laughs> okay. So uh, just got the profile, those profile, and uh, show the reader. And uh, let's go to those profile. So sometimes you can't drag uh, because it thinks you're going to click on the crosshairs. So if you turn the crosshairs off, you I should think be because of the crosshair. That's what, yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe to drag for the crosshair. And uh, now we go to the those profile. Now I can drag it. So I want to profile roughly at DMAX, although typically, yeah, this should be done at 100 centimeters, but DMAX is not. Okay, and uh, I'm going to put minus seven and seven. And I want this to be at my DMAX, so 18.5. So that's the profile of that DMX And then we will calculate the profile. And when I show it, this is a you know, typical profile. It's a 10 by 10. You can see this here, no problem. Now with the MLCs, uh, I have fixed it. Fixed uh, a little bit still needs. Okay, so I don't need to do Delete. So I want to show both profiles. Right. And uh, something that, that I don't get, Andrew, I see a very different, uh, you know, in, in the, the maximum value between the two, uh, one with the jaws and one with MSC. And uh, I, I cannot explain this problem. Uh, here's 6.6. Okay. I would just want to normalize them so that at least you start to see, well, the first problem I had was when I, when I looked at the width from here to here, this was six millimeter larger than from here to here. Now I fixed that. I fixed that by moving the MSU a little bit closer to, to the, uh, uh, to the patient, or further away from the source. I could have done it by modifying the, the MLC width, uh, but but uh, I, I decided to do that way. The other problem I have now is that the MLCs are shifted, are not centered. And, and uh, that is easy to fix. It's not that big of a problem. And uh, And basically, I'm showing you this so that, okay, manufacturers, they have data, they provide you data. And I can open to you actually the, the, the data sheet that they have. And you see, uh, you know, it's, it's, it gives, you know, uh, inaccurate uh, results. So when I look at the documents and the MCPT, <coughs> okay. this is my original input file, the tip of the MLCs were around at 48.175, and that's the one that gave me the seven millimeter problem. So I shifted it down uh, so that now the closer, so the tip of the MLCs are at uh, 51.255, and that gives me much better agreement. But 
Now the location of the MLCs, the ship, so here is the MLCs. You could do it actually with the GUI, uh, but this is actually the issue. So this determines, this tells us where the MLCs are located. Uh, so we have 60 pairs. And uh, if, I, if this was zero, so the first pair is going to be at zero, it's going to be at zero. So the MLCs, we need to shift it back with a minus sign. Uh, and uh, obviously, if this was at I center, we would say, okay, shift it minus 20, end of story. But this is not at I center. This is at the level of the MLC. So we have to, uh, uh, and, and roughly, it's, uh, you, you know, it's about 51, you said. Actually, the middle of the MLC is about around 54. So this makes sense. I'm shifting it 10 centimeters uh, away. But, but it's still, maybe I'm shifting it too much. So one can adjust this. So let's move it back. So I'm using one millimeter. And, uh, and then I repeat the calculation and see how the MLCs are going to fit for a lineup with the jaws. If they line up, then that's probably the best value. I, I mean, the value to use in the calculations. Otherwise, you need to uh, change and, and see how. But it's just an example to show you that vendors' data sometimes are not, uh, you know, uh, has uh, issues. So be careful with that. This is the vendor data, and I uh, just point it out for the MCs. So here it is, you see the middle uh, is the uh, chip. So everything is from the source. So the middle of the MLCs should be 51 centimeters. If you use that, uh, it does not work. Uh, you have to shift it more. I think 54 or 56, I forgot. I did the calculation anyway. Uh, so you need to modify things until uh, they match. And one could say, okay, maybe the leaf dimensions are, are important. You could actually modify the leaf dimensions there with, uh, and they have, they're providing them in this in the table here. This is, I think this is called the high definition MLCs. That's called the Millennium MLCs. There they are. So we have a this article. So another option is you change this width uh, so that at the end you get a match. Okay, so what should we do next? Should we do a CT, uh, generate a CT data uh, conversion table? So in the end, Wamid, you, you now have an input file that accurately positions the MLCs. Is that uh, what you've confirmed? Well, just uh, I'm tweaking it a little bit. Uh, tweaking it a little bit, but to tweaking it so that the the profile now matches the jaw profile? Yes, they have to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I have to tweak it. I could run the calculation, this calculation again, because I did a one millimeter adjustment. So I can, you know, while we do something else, I can run it. Yeah, I mean, I, this is very- So I went and modified it in the template, although I think, yeah, I modified it in the template, so it should, should, uh, should be- okay. I think these activities of verifying that your input file is simulating the head of your Linux accurately, these are the most important steps to do before you start moving to patient calculations.
this is why you, you need multiple uh, co-hosts so that <laughs> so i got disconnected that's the problem okay can you hear me now yes we hear you okay so uh let's let this run while we can do something else It takes a while to submit, uh, you know, especially when you have job 68. It takes, it takes almost two minutes to submit the calculation to the cluster. But, uh, you know, it's, it's probably worth it because if you had low, uh, lesser nodes, the calculation is going to take an hour. So now even with two minutes just to, for submission, I get the, the results within 10 minutes, let's say, or eight minutes. Ramit, since you um, uh, made the phantom in the uh, MMCTB, can yeah. we compare uh, the, uh, let's say, the phantom that we do in our TBS with the one from the MMCTB and see the differences? We could, the only, okay, the problem, I tried this, you know, uh, I had problems actually calculation uh, or generation of physics phantom. So I said, okay, I'm going to do it with uh, Eclipse, you know, we have that cube and then export the, the phantom Because it, it does not, uh, I mean, I, ha I had a problem doing that process, uh, but I have to review it again. Maybe it should, maybe it's going to work. Because there is no image, I mean, I could not find, uh, the MMCTP could not find the image to get a pixel value, to convert the pixel value uh, or CT number uh, to, to a, uh, a medium. That was the problem. But you have I the body as a structure, right? True, but eclipse. you generate it, you generate yeah. it, you need to assign CT numbers. And then the diagram when it's exported should have the CT numbers, just like a patient. I had a problem in that part, and maybe I should revisit it. But I tried that. I think, Umid, if you were able to import that DICOM export from Eclipse into MMCTP, and you so I think there is potentially a problem because it maybe not it maybe did not export DICOM images, but if there were DICOM structures, to tell you the truth, Andrew, because I had multiple problems. One of them is I could not, for example, see validate that do I have a phantom or not. I was getting everything black. Now you showed us that when you modify the contrast and the window level, you will get the phantom. You will get the pixels. Yeah. yeah. So that was one problem. Another problem is converting. I had problems converting uh, the CT, uh, you know, any image to, for example, uh, do a calculation in water. So I was not, uh, I, I did not know, was the problem in, for example, the, the image itself, or was the problem in uh, generating or, or, or in the, those uh, boxes conversion? Now I'm getting, you know, my, I understand, you know, how to now look into this and that one. So that's why I could not actually confirm, was there a problem? Maybe the problem was me. Uh, so I, we need to do it again. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, because if, if you do have a structure, there's an option to fill that structure with a specific density and material. True. So, so I tried that, but there was something wrong, something, you know, I had problems. Yeah. So we have. I have to try it again, and probably it's going to work this time. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> while this is calculating, we can save and close, and uh, importing. Let's do import. So again, that this is straightforward. Uh, and this is just to, to, to look at, you know, have a sense of how much time is required to import the CT, uh, just a regular CT for a patient. So I have here an example. So this is a 
transfer and you click on transfer. If I'm not mistaken, this uh, is a 189 slice uh, image. So it's reading the seat, the diacom CT and uh, structures and the plans and the dose. Four things, I think. Uh, I think that. And I guess, Andrew, what is happening now is you're converting the CT data, the seat answered units into a uh, an image with pixels. What it's doing there is it's actually putting them in order. So it okay. reads them in out of order, and then it has to put them in in ascending order. And that takes some time because they're all they're in memory and it needs to reconfigure the order of the matrix. Is this isn't like a DICOM has a so, so you look at, for example, the, the position uh, of, of a DICOM image and you, you sort? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You look at the Z position. Mm -hmm. These have to be axial axial images for MMCT work. MMCT so are you using bubble sort or what sort of <laughs> sorting algorithms? It's a it's a sorting option within Zojo. It'll okay. it'll add the Z position for each one of those. Again, this I mean I don't mind if such a thing takes a bit of time because I, this is done once. It's not done, uh, uh, you know, uh, constantly going to be done every time you do a calculation. If it's done once. It's not a big deal. Okay, so. Can I open two patients? I did not try this actually. So, yeah. Uh, Andrew, have you thought about actually using uh, a database, SQL, uh, for example, or MySQL? You will want something like it based on a database server. For storing what exactly? Every, everything. Oh, everything. So now instead of having everything like in directories. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because I was thinking, I mean, everything you're forcing, for example, the application to be stored in the slash applications. I'm talking about the Mac version. Mm -hmm. And everything now is under a slash uh, uh, whatever the user decides. The, the question I have is, uh, for example, if you want to have everything on a server, the data, and uh, people can launch the application from different terminals and they read from the server. So that probably need a database. Have you thought about, that's a big move, by the way. It's not an easy task. No, yeah, it, it is a big move. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice if I were to rewrite that. Yeah, I would use a database. Because then the users need to install a database. Uh, uh, so the database will contain all information, your beams, your patients, everything. All what you need to have is uh, probably a file, external file to point to the IP address for the database. Uh, but the rest, uh, okay. So this is uh, now, this is the patient. Uh, it's a long case. Probably generate So it's not bad. We we managed to import uh, the images and uh, the ability now to do any calculations. Uh, even it imported the dose the dose distribution. So you can look at the view. Okay. So there is the dose distribution. Actually, this is from Eclipse. 
And the idea then is, okay, we generate, we calculate something with NMCTP, uh, and then do a comparison. We can apply different genetic corrections if you want, and so on. That's really the big advantage. The problem with MLCs, I start to see it with this patient, by the way, because when I was doing the calculation, first, uh, MMCTP uh, or dose was not really in the right spot. Uh, and it was larger. I could see it's a bit larger. So that's why this triggered that I should go and look at, you know, the MLCs, how they. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm almost done. With that. Okay. So it does not take a long time to actually, there you have, there's the images and uh, you can look at uh, the cross here. And uh, now I can actually. But if you have a Windows machine, probably the keyboard, uh, the arrow keys would also work. Let's look at uh, probably we can do this very quickly. We've done it before, but I want to repeat it again. And uh, Bilal had something, he, I took it from him, uh, CT calibration care. Okay, there it is. So, this is a calibration care recently done by uh, our physicist Bilal for a new machine. And uh, we're going to enter uh, this CT calibration care. The default one uh, that comes with the MMCTP, that's the RAM, uh, but we want to enter this one. So we'll go and we will go to the configuration and CT models. This is the default one, uh, H2O RAM. <coughs> So I'm going to I'm going to make. Did I put it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's probably there. But we'll repeat it. No problem. Add a new model. Okay. So we'll do this model. Test GE. Okay. And the PEX data file. Uh, and the number of materials I have in the uh, since I want still the CT calibration care to still use water, but change the densities. So I will have only one material uh, there. Actually, no, this is this is the number of rows. I think. Yeah, that's a mistake. It should say number of rows. Yes, or some have rows. multiple yeah. materials of different rows. Yeah. The same so, yeah, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So let's try 13. Let's, let's try this. Okay, and all of them will have the same material, H2O, 5 to 1, RCRU. This material needs to be, it has to exist in, in the fixed data file and the calculation. So I can copy this quickly and paste it. Might need an extra one or remove one. Do you will get you figure that thing. So these are the CT. Uh, I think Bilal, you measured this with the Cyrus Phantom, I guess. Yes, with the Cyrus, different uh, materials. Different plugs, right? And they have the, there are two plugs uh, per material, and uh... Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay. Because you have to use it either in the uh, head and also in the body, and you, they okay. should not be in the same direction. This is how the recommendation from this Cyrus. So this is the table that we obtained from measurement uh, for our CT. And this data is, is was uh, inserted in our trip bank system. So if I want MMCTP to calculate exactly using the same CT care, I need to actually put this data 
uh, into the uh, uh, into or generate the model and, and use the same data. Although, like what Andrew pointed out several lectures, is, this is not really that critical. And uh, I, I agree with him. We, we've seen this. Uh, so one thing, I guess it uh, maybe it doesn't matter too much for water because everything is water. Yeah. The curve in your Excel sheet is relative electron density. We where, have both the relative electron density and the mass density. Oh, you do have the mass density. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. dose XYZ will, will only work with mass density. Okay, that's a good uh, uh, good point. Uh, I'm not sure which one did I use in the, this one. This one probably I used the electron density. So this one is not correct. I should use the the, uh, the mass density, like what Andrew pointed out. Okay, so we'll put here, let's change the name. GE, I'm going to call it mass. Okay, so we understand uh, this. So the low, this is minus 1,000. So I'm going to, I'm just going one, uh, one at a time, okay, one row. So I need a range. The range goes from this to this one, this entry to this one, entry. So from minus 1,000 up to uh, minus 992. And the low density, this is still zero one, zero point zero zero one. Okay. And the next one, <clears throat> I'll go, uh, this will be from minus uh, so, uh, 992 up to minus Nine, 970. 970. And the electron density is still the same. I could actually. Just do it one one uh, single one. Or th this this is probably a typo I have. I'm not sure because here That's I correct. see it's, uh, point 0.1 and then point zero zero one. Is it's still correct? still correct. It's still the correct. The density okay. correct. Okay, so I probably I have a typo here. This. Uh, oh, okay. I see now because this is from minus eight one five. It's a different value. Yes. Okay, so we can actually we can. So instead of this, we can just go from minus 970 because the density is still the same. So I can uh, combine these two in one entry. So from here, we go from minus 970 and uh, 815. Right? And this will be 0 0.001. And then this will be 0 0.2. Uh, Wumi, yeah. yeah. One thing I want you to be careful of, though, is if you decrease the number of materials to twelve now, and you put it, don't, don't touch that yet. If you put a one, it'll erase everything but the first one. Okay. So you have to copy a twelve and paste it into that box. Oh, I see now. Okay, <laughs> okay. I think we had that. Uh, I did that mistake on live actually. Uh, Okay, there it is. Okay, eight one uh, five. This is going to be eight uh, five zero five five zero seven. Yes. Yes. Minus five zero seven. Point two and two point five. Zero point two. Five oh seven to minus seventy one. from 0.5 to uh, 0.96. Then 71, uh, one. to 62, minus 62, 0.96 to 0.99. Exactly. Minus 62 to minus 2. From 0 0.99 to 1. Then you have from minus 2 to 43. And from 1 you to 1.06. Minus 2 to 0 0.03. 
then uh, 43 to 49 from 1.06 to 1.07 from 949 uh, to 41 101 from 107 to 106 116 116 okay. then from Then from 880 to 2,976 and from 1.61 to 4.51. Okay. okay, so now we need to put here 11 and we copy it and then we paste it here. Okay. So this is how, how uh, from the measurement, we need to put a ring, and then we, and uh, like what Andrew said, we need to, uh, EGS works with the mass densities. So we're gonna close that. And now the CT model is actually available uh, for us. And to use it, so let's go to the CT. Of course, the, the ramp and our CT model if I'm doing a homogeneous phantom, everything is going to be uh, uh, water and, 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 and uh, uh, density of one, then it, it's not a big deal. But uh, a case like uh, this, uh, this patient a lung case, <clears throat> it makes a different, little bit of a difference. And it would be nice to do, uh, you know, once I have everything set and the MUs are, uh, the machine is calibrated, I can actually calculate with the default ramp and uh, uh, with the, the CT data that we have generated, so let's see what's the big difference or, or is there a difference between the two? Okay, so uh, okay, it's not popular in the because it's looking for the six, uh, the six MD, I change this. This is actually a CT, uh, Combium CT beam, so we need to be, I don't need it. And uh, this one is another set of field, delete. Delete, okay. So there is a six MV, uh, the other one. Andrew, I have a question. How do you distinguish label-wise between the six triple F and the six MV? Because uh, when I import the data like this, uh, when I import the field, the plan, uh, it will the energy will be defined as six MV, uh, six actually. Is that correct? So a six FFF will show up just as six. Yeah, I think this plan is a is not a six. This plan is a six MV, uh, and it will show up as a, sec, a six. When I, so because I have defined, I have changed something in my, you know, the label on the beam. Uh, but you see, this is a six MV, and I got a six label. This is this is a new label generated because I've imported this new CT. Right. I I did not. Uh, I don't know with a six triple F, when I imported. Will it use a, the same six MV six like this, or it's going to generate a six triple F? I have to test that. We we should test that, but that's a label that comes through from DICOM, and so if it differs from how you've labeled it in MMCTP, it'll add a new energy. Yes. So my question with this DICOM labeling, the six and the six triple F are are two different. It like labels them differently. Well, we can we can open them up right now if you have a plan. I don't have a, I don't have a six triple F. Okay. Uh, plan. We uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll have an answer for next week. Uh, okay. Off the top of my head, I don't know how DICOM differentiates the two energies. Okay. It may not. It, 
Why don't you just say the, the six for both? Because one has to be careful then. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so the point, I mean, me and Adi were discussing is now when we, I generated this, imported this plan, automatically the beam was created and the label for the beam was six. And I know if I had a 15 MV, the label is going to be 15. The question we have is, if the plan was generated with six triple F beams, the DICOM will have the label six or six triple F. If it's a six triple F, that's not a problem because when I import it and I don't have that beam label six triple F, automatically it's going to generate it. And then I have to figure out the input file, default input file and so on. But if it does not distinguish that, and, and the label is going to be six, then although the plan was calculated with the or six triple F, MMCTP might by mistake use the six MV or think that that beam was generated with the six MV. And then when you do the calculations, things might be wrong. So we have to, uh, I'm gonna try that. Okay, so to generate the phantom now is we'll go and generate a new X and Y. And you see all the structures are available. And this is what Andrew was talking about. I think if I have a body contour, uh, I can clean everything outside the body. And uh, we can actually select the body here and just force everything to be a specific material that I want. Uh, but I'm not going to do that in this case. I want uh, things to be uh, generated. So now we're going to get everything using the CT model, but I'm going to use the GE mass. And uh, GE mass. Uh, Dr. Omid, I found it for yes. the DICOM. For the 6MV, they call it 6X. And for the 6 triple F, they call it 6 triple F. Yes, but the problem, yeah, Bilal, when, when I import this this patient, the plan was done with 6 MV. I know that for sure, okay? Or 6X. When I imported it in MMCTP, the label given to the beam was 6, and that's it. Okay, so like what Andrew, this new label, you see that this 6 new label, and the 2.5, is a label for that beam. 2.5 is for the imaging. Yeah, imaging. Right? Yeah. The imaging field. Yeah. Yes. Okay? So it does not have, it's an X or triple yeah. F. It does yeah. not have that. The point we have is now if I have import a six triple F plan. Does the system will create a new uh, label it, called six triple F or will take the six should, as is? Yes. And, and it should actually create, it should create, if everything is fine, it should create a new a new uh, label to distinguish between the two beam modalities. So we, we need to test that. So I can, uh, can I share my screen? We can do yeah. it afterwards too, just to show you how it reads the beam energy. Okay. So there it is. Go ahead. So this is the element right here. I'm highlighting it, nominal beam energy. So it's reading in the value of that DICOM element as a string. And this is the problem. It's converting the string to a double. A value. Okay. A value. So then we okay. have, we, we basically have a number associated to each beam energy. Okay. So if it's 6X or 6M, Six F F F. There is no discrimination. It does. Yeah, it'll lose that information and call it six. Okay. So I think this needs to be uh, enhanced to handle two different photon energies that have the same numeric value. Okay. But the first thing is we need to test uh, because the issue is that in the DICOM file, is it uh, because I don't see you're trimming anything. I don't believe this is the problem. The DICOM file, the, the string is still just a number. It does not have the label of an X or triple F. Are you sure? I because, thought you just confirmed that it says 6X or 6FFF. Well, just open open your code. I will show you why, why your code, because you're not trimming. 
No, but I'm assigning a numerical okay, he's, value. He's converted as a numerical value. So uh, the label will yes. be gone. It will be only as a number. No, but, but okay. The item that is read from the DICOM is a string, right? Correct. But then and I can that string, if that string is 6x, I don't think Zoji will, will be able to convert that to a numerical value. Well, that's that's but how the if, code is but, written. But if it's six, it can it can it can uh, convert it. I think that, that's because how does the code convert? For example, if I put MV, just two letters, how does it convert it to to a, a, a numerical value? A numerical value. So I, I, maybe you, I'm wrong. You raise a good point, but how I'm interpreting it is. There is a number in that string, and it's the first character of that string. So, but it's, you're not. But you're not taking the first character. And how do you deal then with it's a 15 MV with two characters? It's reading in numeric values until there's a space, and then it converts that into a number. Oh, do you convert it? Actually, do you do that in the code? That's what the two lines are uh, that I showed you are doing. Yeah. Can you can you show, show it? To, uh, I'll show it to you again, Yeah. Okay. So this, this first line is a string. Temp is a string. You can see it identified as a string. And then we, we send that temp value and using val, it converts that string to a number. Okay, my question is if the string is six X. If the string is six, I agree. It, it, that can do the conversion. But now there is a character attached to it. What nice. you need to do first is you need to remove that character and then you convert the value. But I think uh, the value stored in the diagram. Well, the best thing is probably we need to pause it and see what's what's actually being uh, coming out. If if you have the code running as uh, the source code, you can put a breakpoint here. We need. Yeah. And yeah. you can see how these two values change line by line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna check that and then we'll, we'll comment on it. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's share. Okay. So now this is created. And if I go and, and look at the images, so you see, when I click on the image, I get a pixel value. And uh, probably there is a density. Uh, let's go and uh, look at, let's view the title now. Okay. So these are the, uh, this is the image of, of, let's say the voxel images based on, on uh, uh, densities. And that's why the grayscale, the grayscale represents not the densities, the differences in densities but the material is water. And if I want to see what materials are assigned to these voxels, then you'll see everything is just water. So water and then outside is air, outside the body is air. So we have two materials there. If we had a more, uh, another conversion table where now I want to actually, instead of using water, I want to use water. I think Andrew has showed us uh, one. So then you will get, actually, you will see when we look at the materials, uh, you will see the- The density is changing while you are moving, right? So it's yes. uh, water, but the density is according to the calibration curve that you have put, right? Yes. So this is the density, right? And this is basically what an uh, ethereum plant system does. Yes. Everything is water, but with different densities. And this is the image of it. Yeah. But but if I want to look at the material, okay, then uh, I have actually another, uh, I think I do have another one. Let's check. Okay, I just want to show you the difference between the two. Uh, C2 models. This different planning, everything is water. What's this one? Okay, I thought I had one where I actually assign different uh, materials. Uh, but but we could, for example, modify this one, and then put, uh, for example, the first three, 
uh, or maybe the first two we can put air, and then then we put lung, and then we put tissue, and then we put bone, for example. So we have, and once we do this, when we do this, when we do the conversion, you will going to see that different materials are assigned to different regions within the body. But uh, 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 what we have done with this image is to assign, uh, I mean, the material to be water all over. But the density uh, change. If, for example, we do this and we go with body, and I'm going to put the material H2O, 5 to 1, I, C, R, U. And then I'm going to put the density to be 1. So, okay. And uh, So now it's going to generate the water, the water, and you will see that the density is going to be over the top. And uh, uh, we will not get that density image uh, anymore. We're going to get uh, something uh, uniform. So we go to view here and you see, I'm looking at this, the density map, but now this white density is one, black, that is air. Yeah, so everything now is, is uh, water. You force the system to- Everything is water. Not the system. Okay. You can do it, uh, I use the body, uh, but then you can do this for different contours. Uh, you can assign different uh, materials. Uh, for example, I can go and uh, overwrite something again. So the body, uh, I just don't know, uh, Andrew, you can, you can help in this. For example, if I use uh, the bones here, okay? Does it go sequentially from top to bottom? Uh, good question, Wamid. So there's a fill order. So you want to fill yes. the largest first and then okay. smaller afterwards. So the body should be at the top because that'll get filled first. And then if you want more detail over top of it, those have to be below. And you can change the order of these this list. By dragging it or, or how, how is that? Well, there is, there is an arrow in the left side, Omid. Small arrow. Mm -hmm. There's, yes, I haven't done this for a while, so it may not work, but the intention is that arrow would move it up. Okay, and yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, okay, I see it now. Okay, that's good. Okay. So now if I, I did this, then it doesn't make any sense because it will fill the bones, but then we'll come to the body and then override everything on the bones and just fill it with water. Exactly. So has, yeah. yeah, so it has to be like that. Okay. So if I uh, if that's the case, then oh, I cannot. Okay, sorry. Generate. That's fine. And let's give it a density. Let's put two point three or one point seven. And uh, let's do that. And we're going to generate. Yeah. So let's put here. I can put tissue instead of water for the body, but uh, I have to wait for it here. So now the bone, uh, those are uh, have a different density. This is a density uh, image because the uh, the bones, the density is 1.7. That's why they have a different, uh, or they appear. Uh, if I've used bone, but I put the density to be one, you should not distinguish between the body and the bones. Okay, because this image is, is generated based on difference in density. But in materials, 
uh, there is, there it is. So we can see the bones. Uh, I'm wondering what, what is, why we have a three, one is bone, water, and air. Seems like there's some artifacts. Uh, just hover over the dots from it, you'll see the density is different. Yeah, it goes to air. Yeah, it became close to water. Uh, it's, yeah, and yeah, then close to air. air, yeah. I'm surprised. Why Why do we get this? Why well, is that? That's a good question. I would say it has to do with uh, differences in... No, no, but I'm overriding, right? I'm right. overriding everything to... Okay. okay. So basically, this is this is the advantage. One of the advantages that we have here, we can assign different uh, materials. Uh, and, uh, but with this method, when you override, the density is going to be fixed. Yeah, I, I think we need. It has to do with uh, the graphics routine that's being employed to paint those yeah. objects uh, on the layer of the egg fan image. We can dive deep into how these graphics routines uh, don't draw a discrete image because most of the time you don't want a very sharp edge. But in this application, we do want that sharp edge of the boundary is uh, exactly that pixel. So sometimes it smooths out the boundary so that the graphics looks better to the eyes. So I think that's introducing that artifact for when you're pasting the bone image on top of the body image. And I can verify that how that looks in on the Windows machine. It may look a little bit different. Okay, okay so now uh, I don't know what else uh, we uh, should discuss today, uh, but at least, what I would like next time to show uh, is uh, to do the physics to try somehow to generate. I want to generate using the non CT factor so that uh, we can uh, start generating uh, profiles and outputs uh, for for uh, like as if we're commissioning proper commissioning of at least the outputs. Uh, of our LENAC or being able to MMCTP. I don't know if there is anything, if anyone wants to dig in and take over, uh, that's fine with me. No one? So should we conclude uh, our session today? I don't see any questions and yeah, you could conclude it. Okay, then. So we'll, we'll try to do this next time. I will continue because I think the first step is to, to uh, generate uh, outputs, uh, output table get some PDDs, the, the basic stuff, just to make sure that at least that the model that I'm, I'm using matches, for example, measured data or measure matches the beam, or at least matches the data that is commissioned in the treatment tank system. There are another a few things, and this probably in the future, I don't think we should address them now, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew. <clears throat> I was playing around with these menus. And then I start to see this is inverse tool, inverse tools, inverse planning. So do you have inverse planning with the, with the system or what does that point to? Well, it points to, uh, it points to a window where there's a C program attached to MMCTP to optimize over different dose distributions. Now, most users, well, they're not gonna have that C program running on their computer, so it's not going to do anything for them. This was more or less 
the method that I used for my PhD project. What I had MMCTP do was calculate all of these beamlets and a beamlet is basically just fluence, uh, except for it's actually a Monte Carlo calculation for a one by one of the of a photon field. And then from all of these one by one square photon fields, you can generate an MLC map for optimization. But it, you know, MMCTP is written in Zojo, which is not a, a language that can be used for minimizing a cost function. So all that MMCTP was doing was running the Monte Carlo calculations and sending these dose distributions to a C program for optimization. So MMCTP was useful to create the structure volumes and the dose within each structure for each one of these MLC defined uh, output calculations. So- uh, And uh, did you actually uh, write that C code or you had the uh, libraries? Uh... I have the C code, yes. Okay. Um, but it would it would be a lot to try and uh, go over how that works with other users because it was written for basically my PhD project, not necessarily written for other people to follow. So a PhD project, then you don't think it can be delivered in twenty minutes? Thought no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, but I'm surprised you cannot do optimization with Zojo because these are numerical uh, routines and uh, one should be able to write the code uh, for well, optimization. Think, think about it. I mean, you, you're going to have, there's approximately 100 to 1,000 dose calculations that you might have. And in memory, uh, in C, all of that information for each structure and each dose distribution needs to be within memory. And then every time you're adjusting weights for beamlets, it needs to calculate new DVH values. So there is quite a bit of information needed. So it's to be because of, mem of memory. That's why C is much better than Zojo in dealing yeah. with memory. It, it has to do a lot of math. I agree. It has to do a lot of math. I agree with that. And it's an iterative process. So there's just thousands and thousands of calculations. And, uh, that is not uh, available uh, or? Well, what is available is simple. how MMCT yeah. can um, um, launch the calculations. So we can go over no, that. I, I meant, I, I, no, I meant the C program itself, uh, the, this, the program. This is, I mean, there, are there others, for example, using it or, uh, or you're just keeping it, uh, it's not for public uh, domain? It's not for public domain right now, mostly okay. because it's, it's not well documented. And okay. I think there are other ways of, of doing the optimization. The, the method that I had developed was... Uh, previously developed by Kalad and Mark Andre Renault has developed an, a more robust method to optimize. So I think the, the approach can be further refined in terms of the algorithm that was used for optimizing. Okay then. Uh... Because that caught my attention, and it's uh, something very nice, uh, you know. And Dev Tang is something uh, definitely. Uh, it's, it's very challenging, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, anyone else has any questions, or should we conclude? So we're going to conclude probably today. Anyway, thank you very much, Andrew, uh, for your time. And uh, uh, next time, I'm going to continue to look into this physics. Uh, Profiles and output, and uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Amit, and thank you, Dr. Andrew, for your time. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, see you next week. Inshallah.